A lot of the talk coming out of that campaign has surprised and worried me. J.D. Vance has risen quickly in the Republican Party, from a best-selling author who voted against Trump in 2016. I will never vote for Trump. I didn't like him at all. To getting a U.S. When you're 38 years old. J.D., I read that book a long time ago. I watched the movie again, Ron Howard. I watch everything you do and I want to start with this one because you said you liked it because it was about a family. A famous actor just threw a verbal tornado at J.D., who used to be his target, Vance. Ron Howard, who made a touching movie about Vance's story of going from poverty to wealth, is clearly upset with him now. Joe, thanks for joining us tonight from the Republican National Convention. Before I ask about J.D., Vance just gave an amazing speech. I'd like to ask him about the Democrats, who have taken some attention away from the Republicans, and gives the man he used to admire a harsh review. Where did the J.D. go? Many people were moved by Vance's story through Howard's view. What about how Vance changed? Howard, who is usually very polite, broke his silence. Come with us as we reveal Ron Howard's surprise news. Hollywood is talking a lot about what director Ron Howard has said lately, which ranges from stories set in small towns to political dramas. He's one of the most powerful guys in Hollywood. Ron Howard is a director, producer, and actor. Think Entertainment, Howard's production business with Brian Grazer, just signed a huge deal about JD. He made a movie based on Vance's life called Hillbilly Elegy a few years ago. Howard told people at the Toronto International Film Festival that J.D. Since they worked on the movie together, Vance has changed a lot. Howard met Vance when he chose to make a movie based on Vance's best-selling memoir, which is about his hard childhood in working-class Ohio. While they were working together, Howard was more interested in Vance's journey of overcoming struggles than in his political views. Howard said that they didn't talk about politics much because they mostly talked about Vance's hard youth and how he became successful. Bad things that happen to some kids as they grow up, i.e. being yelled at, insulted, or put down by your parents. Yes, getting hit, pushed, or thrown something. Check. Being raised by parents who are divorced or split. Check. Things have changed a great deal since then. It used to be that Vance was only known for his book about the struggles of forgotten American communities. Now he is a big political figure. His choosing to be Donald Trump's running mate in the 2024 election was a big change that not many people saw coming when the movie was made in 2019. Howard seems to be upset about some of Vance's recent controversial comments, like the ones she made about women in politics that got a lot of negative feedback. Howard's answer at the Toronto International Film Festival was careful but clear. He was worried about how Vance's public image has changed. Howard carefully chose the words he used to say that he was shocked and upset. By a lot of the speech he's read and heard, Howard is known for staying out of politics, so his words stand out. During his 50 years in Hollywood, Howard has mostly avoided political problems from when he was a child actor to when he won an Oscar as a director. It makes a big difference in the showbiz world that he chose to speak out now. Howard doesn't just criticize in his answer. He talked about how important it is to stay active in government. Yes, I would say that I've been surprised, given what I went through five or six years ago. U.S. citizens are being asked to stay educated and participate in democracy. He thinks that what's important right now is to pay attention and vote. He said more about what he believed and shifted the conversation from past links to present duties. This shows an interesting trend in American culture, art and politics are coming together in strange ways. There is a bigger conversation going on about political change and personal growth around the movie Hillbilly Elegy. The movie was supposed to be about family, strength, and moving up in life. Howard's words are just about Hollywood. This brings up bigger questions about how people change when they run for office. In an interesting turn of events, Vance wrote in his autobiography that he would be the first to say that he had not done anything truly great with his life. Certainly nothing that would make someone who doesn't know you pay money to read it. This humble statement is different from the way he is currently running for office, which gives Howard's views more depth. Howard is upset about the way Vance has changed, but he talks to her with respect because he knows that people can change. Howard is known for being professional and having serious conversations, even about things that are controversial. After what Ron Howard said about J.D., many people are wondering what about Vance's changes made one of Hollywood's most prestigious directors interested in this controversial story in the first place. How Hillbilly Elegy came to be. Netflix hoped that Hillbilly Elegy would be more than just another family story when they paid $45 million for the rights to show it in 2019. The streaming giant thought this story about three generations working against the odds in the middle of America would be popular. The movie version of Vance's memoir had a great cast. Glenn Close and Amy Adams gave great performances as the strong women who changed Vance's life. The story is about J.D. Vance, who was played by Gabriel Basso, on his strange way from the Appalachians to Yale Law School. This isn't just another poor man's gain story, though. 
Amy Adams plays Vance's mother, Bev, in the movie, which is about the complicated effects of family pain. Amy Adams, an award-winning actress, says that her new part in the movie Hillbilly Elegy is personal to her. Adams plays Beverly Vance, and Glenn Close plays her co-star. Having a problem with drugs puts her life and the futures of her children at risk. Mama is Vance's tough, loving grandmother, and Glenn Close had to put on three hours of makeup and prosthetics every day to make the character look old and worn. Different problems had to be solved behind the scenes of the creation. Filming took place in a number of places, such as Vance's hometown of Middletown, Ohio, and Atlanta, Georgia. The team worked closely with people from the area to make sure they got a real sense of Appalachian life, down to the accent and small details of working class life in the area. The movie came out in November 2020. Netflix decided to let the movie come out in theaters first before streaming it because it came out during the height of the COVID-19 plague. Even though the situation was strange, Hillbilly Elegy found its audience quickly and was Netflix's most watched movie on its first day. What's most interesting is how the movie has become more important over time. It was first written to put light on an often overlooked part of American society. Now, it's an important part of learning about a possible vice president's background. A surprising number of people watched the movie more in 2024, after Donald Trump picked Vance as his running mate. They wanted to learn more about the man who was so close to becoming president. The production design team spent months making sure that scenes from the 1990s to the 2010s had all the right touches. They carefully copied the look of each time period from more than 3,000 pictures of Appalachian houses. The soundtrack, which mixes traditional Appalachian folk music with modern songs to show how the culture of the area is changing, was another example of the care that went into the film. One of the most interesting things about the movie is that it shows an important time in Vance's life before he got involved in politics. It shows him as a young man who is struggling with who he is and where he fits in, stuck between his low-income past and his academic goals. When people watch this movie now that Vance is a politician, it gives the story a new meaning. In 2024, the movie became more popular, which shows that people are reviewing this personal family story in light of Vance's rise to power. Each time they read it, they might see the same story of hard work and family ties, or they might find new meanings in it. People are watching Hillbilly Elegy again because Vance is becoming more famous in politics, but critics and fans are still not sure if it really showed the heart and complexity of life in Appalachia. Or did it not hit the mark? How different people felt about Hillbilly Elegy? Some of the story can be found in the numbers. With only 25% from 251 reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie got a lot of bad reviews. But this low score doesn't show the interesting difference between people who liked the acts and people who didn't like how the story was told. The best film reviewers. Some people didn't like how the movie showed poverty and struggle because they thought it was too simple. The New York Times talked about how the movie showed country America. A guy from our area has had his book on the New York Times top list for 60 weeks. Hillbilly Elegy, which J.D. Vance wrote, is a very personal look at his troubled and often chaotic life. Some people from Appalachia who saw the movie thought it reinforced bad ideas about their area, while others said it was a true story about one family's life. Even though it caused a stir, Glenn Close and Amy Adams' performances stood out and were praised even by harsh reviewers. Close was nominated for an Oscar for her role as Mama. This is her eighth nod. It was interesting that they had not won in a while, People said Adams' powerful performance as Bev reminded them of her part in Junebug, where she played a complicated character from the middle of America. It was Richard Roper of the Chicago Sun-Times who gave the movie a rare four stars, which made other reviews think twice. He liked how honest the movie was about how it made him feel, and how it deals with tough topics like drug abuse and family problems. His good reviews showed how different critics can read the same work based on their own experiences and points of view. The different reviews that came out after the movie's first showing are especially interesting. Some reviewers went back and said that current events and Vance's work as a politician have given some scenes new meanings. Now that Vance is a well-known politician, the movie's picture of social mobility and the American dream has a new meaning. Film experts have said that Hillbilly Elegy is a lot like Winter's Bone and October Sky, which are also movies about social class in America. These comparisons have led to more general conversations about how Hollywood shows life in the country and the middle class. Some reviewers say that movies often either make these stories seem more exciting or make them too easy to understand. Some people think it's important for these groups to get attention from the mainstream, but the audience has rejected this idea. Many critics gave the movie bad reviews, but scores on sites like IMDb show that a lot of people liked it because it made them feel something and was relatable. It's a big deal that people have different ideas about who should tell these stories and how they should be told. People use the movie to show how events in real life can change what art means. Viewers and reviewers alike have started to look back at the movie more often as Vance's political career has grown reading scenes in conversation to find hints about what he should do next.
One question stands out as the discussion goes on and more people watch the movie. Will Hillbilly Elegy be looked at again as time goes on and things change? Or will the movie's mixed reviews decide how it is remembered in the history of movies? Critics are still arguing about what makes Hillbilly Elegy good, but most people can't deny how far the movie's director has come. However, how did a kid actor from Duncan, Oklahoma, become one of the most renowned movie directors in Hollywood? How Ron Howard became a writer in Hollywood? The story of Ron Howard begins far from the fame of Hollywood. Hello, my name is Ron Howard. I know you want to leave now, but if you stay, you'll see the trailer for my new movie, Rush. At home, being in show business was just part of life. He was born in 1954 to actors Rance Howard and Gene Spiegel Howard. His first movie role was in Frontier Woman when he was only 18 months old. He was known as young Ronnie Ron Howard got his big break when he was five years old and got the part of Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show. This event changed both his work and the way he makes movies. Howard learned a lot about time, being real, and the power of stories while working with Andy Griffith. One memorable moment was when Griffith helped Ron cry on camera by making him think that his dog had died. Howard would later use this method when directing sad scenes. Ron Howard became well known after the Andy Griffith show did well. Andy, excuse me, he's a very smart guy who kind of learned on his own. In a way, he taught himself how to be funny while being a teacher. As the Nielsen numbers never dropped below seventh during its eight year run, like many child stars, Howard was able to avoid the problems that come with being famous at a young age. Even though he was famous, his parents, especially his father Rance, made sure he had a normal life. After that, he went to public school and played basketball for John Burroughs High School in Burbank, California. Howard went from being a kid star to an adult actor without any problems as he got older. In Happy Days, he played Richie Cunningham, which showed that he could play a range of roles which ran from 1,974 to 1984 and became a cultural hit. Howard's good-hearted character was a great contrast to Henry Winkler's cool leather-jacketed Fonzie. Howard loved being behind the camera more, though. He started making plans for his future as a director while he was still acting on Happy Days. He made a deal with Roger Corman, who makes B-movies. Howard would be in Eat My Dust if he could direct his first movie. This deal led to the 1975 action comedy Grand Theft Auto, which Howard directed and starred in. A lot of people don't know this, but Howard learned how to make movies during his lunch breaks on Happy Days. The show's directors would let him sit with them and work on camera settings, lighting, and editing. He even practiced blocking scenes in his shed with the Fisher-Price toys his daughter had as extras. Howard had a hard time making the switch from acting to creating movies. Many professionals in the field didn't believe in his skills and thought he was just another actor trying to be a director. But he showed them they were wrong by making several TV movies for NBC, such as Skyward with Bette Davis. Before Night Shift, which came out in 1982, became his big hit. I mean, really smart, has a great sense of humor, and works hard. Howard's early work as an actor had a big effect on the way he directed. He learned how to work well with young players when he was a child and used that skill all through his career, from being a dad to Apollo 13. Working with Andy Griffith taught him how important it was to make the set a friendly place where people could work together. The most important thing is that Howard's work as an actor taught him a lot about the business from both sides of the camera. Throughout his work as a director, this unique point of view has helped him get great performances from actors. As seen in the Oscar-winning roles he has played in many of his movies, Howard went from playing Opie Taylor to getting an Oscar as a director. It's clear that his ability to tell other people's stories, like in Hillbilly Elegy, may come from his own amazing experiences. As an actor and an up-and-coming director, Ron Howard had already proven himself. Many people wondered if he could go from being America's favorite son to becoming one of Hollywood's most famous directors. Child Star takes the lead as director. The answer came in 1982 with the strange comedy Night Shift, which starred Michael Keaton and Henry Winkler, who was also in Howard's Happy Days. Howard was able to handle both comedic and dramatic material with ease, as shown by the movie about graveyard workers who run a strange side business. I've been looking for a while for a story that takes place in that setting in the present day. When the movie did well, it led to opportunities that would change Howard's career for good. Howard's next project, Splash, which came out in 1984, showed that he could think big. The love story between a man and a mermaid in Howard's romantic comedy may have seemed strange at first, but he made it realistic and charming. The movie made over $69 million at the box office, which was a lot of money for that time. It helped Tom Hanks become a main man. But what was more important was that it showed Howard could handle bigger budgets and special effects while keeping the story's emotional heart. Howard's 1985 book, Cocoon, which mixed science fiction with deep themes about getting older and dying, showed even more of his variety. Two Academy Awards were given to the movie. 
such as Donna Meshi for Best Supporting Character. Howard became known as a director who could handle important topics while still keeping people entertained. Many people don't know that Howard was successful because he planned well. He worked with Industrial Light and Magic for months on Willow, which came out in 1988, to come up with new ways to do special effects. The fantasy adventure wasn't a big hit at first, but it became a cult classic over time. It also showed that Howard was ready to try out new filmmaking technology. While well, I started out as a kid actor and my dad directed some plays, but I quickly learned that a lot of the people who were directing me on TV had also been actors. Howard became a parent in 1989, which was another big step in his work. Howard was good at juggling many plots and characters while keeping the feelings real in the comedy drama, starring Steve Martin and a young Joaquin Phoenix. Two TV shows were made after the movie's success. Howard became known behind the scenes as one of the best prepared directors in Hollywood. He made detailed storyboards for every scene and rehearsed with actors for weeks before shooting. He was very careful, which helped him do well on his biggest job yet. Howard's career took a big turn when Apollo 13 Inches came out in 1995 putting him in the top tier of Hollywood directors. Based on a true story about a moon journey that almost didn't make it, Howard had to recreate scenes in zero gravity and with a lot of complicated technology while keeping the drama high. He worked closely with NASA, tried new ways to film, and even put the actors in NASA's vomit comet training plane to feel real zero gravity. It was clear from the reviews and box office success of Apollo 13 that Howard could do well in any type of movie. The movie was nominated for nine Academy Awards and showed how good Howard is at making hard topics fun and easy to understand for a wide audience. Howard stood out at this time because he could do a lot of different things. To try as many new things as I could without being labeled like I was once as an actress. But it's also just a reflection of the works I like. Howard was good at making all sorts of movies, while many directors became famous for just one style or theme. In 1991, he directed the character-driven thriller Backdraft, in 1992, he directed the epic Far and Away, two stories like The Paper in 1994. Fewer people know how Howard changed the business side of making movies. It was during this time that he and producer Brian Grazer made Imagine Entertainment one of the most famous production companies in Hollywood. Howard had more freedom to be creative when he worked with them, and he could work on topics that really interested him. Howard's style as a director changed a lot during these years. He was known as an actor's director, which means he could help actors feel what their roles felt. Howard also made big steps forward in technology during this time. He came up with new ways to film fire safely in backdraft while still making it look real. For many years, these styles would have an effect on action movies. Before Apollo 13 Inches came out, Howard was a kid star. Now he is one of the most trusted and versatile directors in Hollywood. His movies made more than a billion dollars around the world, and he worked with almost all of the big names in the business. Looking back at this great part of Howard's career, making these films that got harder helped him get ready for the even bigger hits that came after, like A Beautiful Mind and The D.A. Vinci Code. Could Ron Howard have even more success in the 2000s after being able to handle more difficult movies so well in the 1990s? The Golden Age of Ron Howard. The year 2001 saw the release of A Beautiful Mind, a movie that would change Ron Howard's career. Not only did critics like the movie, but it was also a big accomplishment for Howard. The project brought out the best in his storytelling skills, and it won him the highest award in the business, the Academy Award for Best Director. The one who plans everything, leads, organizes, does many things, and is the planner. In short, the person the manager says is to blame. Ron Howard for A Beautiful Mind is the person who won the award for Best Direction. The movie won four Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director for Howard. It was about mathematician John Nash's fight with schizophrenia. A lot of people might not know this, but Howard spent months studying it. He also did a lot of work with star Russell Crowe, not to use special effects, but to find subtle ways to show Nash's state. Howard's success kept going with the Tom Hanks, led the D.A. Vinci Code series. The first movie caused a lot of trouble around the world, but it showed that Howard could make movies about serious topics that were still fun to watch. The D.A. Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and Inferno are the three movies that made over $1.4 billion around the world. This shows how good Howard is at making complicated books into movies that people want to buy. Frost slash Nixon in 2008 showed off another side of Howard's skills. Five Academy Awards were given to the movie, which was based on the famous conversations between British journalist David Frost and former President Richard Nixon. What could have been a simple historical drama became an exciting psychological fight under Howard's direction, showing how well he can build tension and make characters strong. Howard had one of the hardest jobs of his career in 2018 when he took over as director of Solo, a Star Wars story, when the first director quit in the middle of filming. Howard reshot almost 70% of the movie with only three weeks left of shooting. 
He finished it on time and made a hit at the box office that fans and critics alike like liked. Howard is trying something new with his first cartoon movie, The Shrinking of Treehorn, which is based on a children's book by Florence Perry Hyde. Howard has been making movies for decades, but this project shows that he is still eager to try new things. He is also working on Eden, a survival movie with Jude Law and Anna de Armas. This shows that he can keep getting great actors to work with him. Howard has stayed one of Hollywood's most reliable directors during this time while also always pushing himself. His movies have made more than $4 billion around the world. He became one of the most popular directors in terms of box office sales. How has Ron Howard been able to keep telling strong human stories that connect with people of all ages in a time when Hollywood is more focused on franchises and special effects? What does Vance's song Hillbilly Elegy say now? Are we being bought without knowing it? Leave a comment with your ideas. Don't forget to share, like, and follow for more. Also, take a look at the next video. It will be fun for you.